On today's show, the Yankees and the Red Sox renew their rivalry, this time in Fenway for two games. The Somerset Patriots had some Yankees playing for them this weekend, and someone was promoted to Somerset just about an hour ago. We'll talk about it. And Michael Kay said some interesting things about Hal Steinbrenner being booed during Jeter's ceremony on Friday night, and I have some thoughts about that. All next, Unlocked on Yankees. <laughs> You are Locked On Yankees, your daily New York Yankees podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Tuesday, Yankee fans. Welcome to Locked On Yankees, which is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Stacey Gonsoulias, and we'd like to thank you for making Locked On Yankees your first listen every day. We're free and available on all platforms, including Apple, Odyssey, Spotify, and Stitcher. You can watch and subscribe to us on YouTube. Also hit the thumbs up button to like our videos and the bell so you're notified as soon as our videos go live. So I hope you're all having a good Tuesday. I am. The sun's finally out. It's kind of a dreary night. Uh, if you live in Brooklyn and you were anywhere near that tornado, I hope you're doing okay. <laughs> it's very rare when New York has tornadoes. It's kind of weird. Um, so yeah, Yankees, Red Sox, rivalry renewed. If you've watched or listened to this show, you know that I couldn't care less about this right now. I get it. It's Yankees, Red Sox. It's always a big deal to people, but not when the Red Sox are 69 and 72 and the Yankees are 85 and 56 coming into the series. So we'll uh, preview the matchups for tonight and tomorrow. And I will say when I went to Yankees.com earlier, it said Cole against Pavetta. And I thought, okay. And I opened the tab. Then I closed the computer, opened it up again. And for some reason, it said TBD instead of Cole, and I panicked, had to check Twitter, and thought, oh no, what the hell happened to Cole? And then when I refreshed it again, Cole showed up again. So everything's fine. Garrett Cole is pitching tonight. And as far as I know, the game shouldn't be delayed by rain because the rain that we had traveled up to Boston. I know that there's a chance of severe thunderstorms up there, but it's not a giant chance. So they could get the game in, hopefully. So let's get into this. The first game tonight on Yes and also TBS out of market. So if you're an out of if you are an out of market Yankee fan, you'll be able to watch this game on TBS. So Garrett Cole, 11 and 7 with a 3.20 ERA, 218 strikeouts. He's 30 away from Gidry's record. Can he get there? Who knows? It's possible we discussed this Abby and I discussed this when we were talking about Cole last week, how even when he has a bad start, he still strikes out a bunch of people. So he is up against Nick Pavetta, who's 9 and 11. It's a good thing he didn't pitch on 9 11. 429 ERA, 148 strikeouts. And let's see how many innings that is in. Cole strikeouts are way above his in innings. I know that much. Pavetta has thrown 155 and one-third innings, 148 strikeouts. You know, not terrible. It's close. You want your strikeouts ideally to be more than the innings that you pitch. You know, those are good numbers. Like for Cole, he's thrown 171 and one-third innings, those 218 strikeouts. He's made 28 starts. Cole's been fine his last three starts. Um, on my birthday, 826 against Oakland, seven and one third innings, one earned run, three hits. He struck out 11, only walked two. Against the Angels on the 31st, this was an odd game. He only had four strikeouts. That's a small amount for Garrett Cole. He pitched seven innings on the nose, two earned runs, six hits, 
one walk, four strikeouts. And then on the seventh against Minnesota, six and two third innings, only gave up one run, 14 strikeouts, two walks. He got the win. Didn't get the win against LA, got the win against Oakland. As for Pavetta, let's look at Pavetta's numbers. And I will tell you the Red Sox lineup because it is out. The Yankees lineup is not out yet. Pavetta has not had a win in his last three starts. Two losses, one no decision. He went five innings against the Rays on the 28th, gave up five runs on eight hits, three walks, four strikeouts. Against Texas, he didn't get a decision. He only pitched three innings, gave up one run on four hits with two walks, two strikeouts. And on the, I almost said ninth, on the 7th of September against Tampa, one run on two hits in five innings, with three walks and three strikeouts. No offense to Nick Pavetta, but I prefer the one who pitched on 828 and gave up five runs in five innings. If you could do that, Nick Pavetta, that'd be great. (laughs) No offense. I'm a Yankee fan. I don't want you to do well. And see, now it says TBA again for the Yankees. What is Yankees.com doing to me? They're scaring me. I just refreshed it and it says TBD again. I don't know if it's my Chromebook that's doing it or if it's actually Yankees.com. So the Red Sox lineup tonight, Tommy Pham, Alex Verdugo, Xander Bogarts, Rafael Devers, J.D. Martinez, Christian Arroyo, Tristan Casas, Kike Hernandez, Reese McGuire. The thing to look out for, Rafael Devers against Garrett Cole. You know how he has his number. My God, in 26 at-bats against Garrett Cole, Rafael Devers has six home runs and 15 runs batted in. Cole did okay the last time he faced him. He kind of had his number in that game. But wow, that is... That's something. (laughs) Holy cow, Garrett Cole. Yeah, don't pitch to him. Don't pitch to him, especially in Fenway. In a second, we're going to talk about tomorrow night's matchup between the Yankees and the Red Sox. We'll preview it. Then we'll talk about the guys who were in, well, they weren't in Somerset. They were playing for Somerset because Somerset was in, I believe, Hartford playing. We'll talk about the guys rehabbing and we'll discuss the big promotion for Jason Dominguez. But first, Bet Online is your number one source for all your pro and college football betting needs and sports info this season. Find all the latest football league developments, game matchups, news and podcasts, including this year's opening week games. Bet Online is also your continued source for all your sports wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. The fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite sports and events, including MLB, MMA, boxing, and golf. Speaking of Major League Baseball, Bet Online seems to think that Aaron Judge is going to pass Roger Maris. So you could bet on that. It's a the, the number is negative, which means, yes, he's going to do it. They're predicting he'll get 62, that he will beat it by one. We'll see what happens. So head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Bet online where the game starts. Thanks again for making Locked on Yankees your first listen every day. Subscribe now to Locked on Yankees on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts so you get notified when each episode premieres. So tomorrow, Nestor Cortez makes his second start back from the IL. I almost called it the DL, and I was doing so well with calling it the IL, and I called it the DL the other day, and I thought to myself, why are you doing that? It hasn't been called that in a while. Nestor Cortez, 9-4 and four with a 273 ERA, 135 strikeouts. And that is in 135 innings, right on the button. I'll say button instead of nose. Brian Bello, Brian Bello. It's spelled Brian, could be pronounced Brian. I've never heard of him. I'm so sorry, sir. He's one in five on the season with a 5.79 ERA. He has 36 strikeouts in 31 and one third innings. His last start against Baltimore 
five and one third innings, three runs on three hits, four walks, seven strikeouts, got the loss. Against Texas on the third, he got the win. Didn't give up any runs against Texas in six innings. And then on the 29th against Minnesota, he was saddled with the loss. He gave up three runs in four innings. His last seven games, he has a 4.60 ERA. In his last 15 games, it's his 5.79 ERA. As for Cortez, as I said, he came back from that IL trip, that phantom IL. He wasn't really hurt. Um, it was the eighth against Minnesota, only threw four innings, so he didn't get a decision. Gave up two runs on two hits, didn't walk anyone, struck out two. The two starts before that, against Toronto on the 21st, he gave up one run on six innings, one run on six innings, one run on three hits in six innings, walked one, struck out five, and then against Tampa, he got the loss on 8-16. He threw seven innings, gave up three runs, didn't walk anyone, struck out three. So those are your two games. It's a cute short series up in Boston and uh, none of the Yankees have faced this bellow guy and Rafael Devers in nine at bats he's only batting 222 against Cortez but he has two home runs and five runs batted in because he's Rafael Devers and he's annoying and likes to hit against the Yankees no matter what Trevor Story has a home run off Cortez he's one for two with the home run and Kevin Ploiecki in two at-bats. Two hits, one of them a home run. So, yeah. So let's talk about the Somerset Patriots. This is very exciting. Jason Dominguez, and I love this so much. I've told this on this show because it's my favorite thing. Jason Dominguez was named after Jason Giambi. And yes, I know he spells it with an extra S, but he was named for Jason Giambi. And that's one of my favorite things, because um, if you haven't watched this show a lot or listened to the show a lot, I was a big Giambi person back in the day. And uh, yeah, I love that someone was named after him. So Jason Dominguez was promoted to Somerset. Anthony Volpe was recently promoted to AAA Scranton. And it's kind of exciting because, you know, there were questions surrounding Dominguez coming into this season, but he's done really well. He started at low A Tampa. He was promoted to high A Hudson Valley at the All-Star break. And between those two levels, he hit 280 with 15 home runs, drove in 58 runs. And he cut his strikeout rate. That's a big deal. He was having issues with strikeouts and groundouts. And he only struck out 34 times in 157 at bats. And he hit 306 in 40 games with Hudson Valley. So he deserves the promotion to Somerset. Now, speaking of Somerset, Zach Britton, Aroldis Chapman, Miguel Castro, and Harrison Bader were with the team. Harrison Bader got a single on Sunday, and he did express that he had some discomfort in his injured foot, which isn't great to hear because that's why he hasn't been able to play with <laughs> the Yankees. But as long as he keeps playing... It's just hard. Plantar fasciitis is, it affects the, if I'm not mistaken, it affects the bottom of your foot, like uh, not quite the arch, but between the ball and the heel, because the arch is more on the side, but it's like that whole part of your, the middle part of your foot, that's usually where plantar fasciitis is. It's not a good thing. Not at all. And it's hard to come back from. And a lot of people had issues with the Yankees trading for a guy who had this problem. And yes, it seems silly that they made this trade and that Jordan Montgomery is doing so well. And, you know, we're going to talk about Yankee fans not being happy with certain things that the Yankees did and taking it out on Hal Steinbrenner in 
just a moment. But first... Okay, so Chapman, Britton, Bader, and Castro were with Somerset. Chapman and Bader appeared in the game on Sunday. Bader had the single, and Chapman threw a scoreless frame. I still can't believe that Zach Britton is back. That just seems to be um, unbelievable from what happened to him. Britton pitched on Sunday, pitched a perfect fifth inning, got two strikeouts. Castro retired all three batters that he faced in the sixth on seven pitches. And yes, I know they're pitching to kids, but that's a good sign too. The good thing about the Yankees right now, they have these guys coming back. This could be a big, big deal for all these guys to come back. I mean, the bullpen is actually doing okay. The pitching staff is doing okay without these guys. But to have some of these guys back will be really helpful down the stretch. So the Patriots today are playing against the Portland Sea Dogs, AA affiliate of the Boston Red Sox. How perfect! Yankees, Red Sox in the minors too. So it's good to hear that Britain, Castro, Chapman, and Bader were all with Somerset and all did okay and seemed to be healthy. You know, Chapman got a tattoo, got an infection. That was dumb of him to do. Don't do that stuff during the season, guys. You can't do that. You never know. Even if you've gotten many tattoos, there could be just one that gets infected. You have to be careful with that. It's just so silly for them to do something like that. And it makes you miss games. Just don't do that. So as I alluded to earlier, I was watching the Michael Kay show yesterday. And Michael Kay... Don LaGreca and Peter Rosenberg, the three guys who were on the show, were discussing Hal Steinbrenner being booed on Friday night during the Jeter ceremony. And Michael Kay was talking about how Hal is a good guy and he doesn't deserve to be booed, um, that he's doing everything he can to help the Yankees spend money and, you know, the fans shouldn't boo him. Okay, here is my thought. (laughs) Yankee fans are not rational. I know, I am one. I try to be rational, but there are moments when I'm not rational. And the thing about it is, the Yankees have been playing horribly, okay? They had been playing horribly heading into the Jeter ceremony. Yes, they they took two, uh, two, three out of four against the Twins, but it's the Twins. The Yankees always beat the Twins. Before that, the Yankees hadn't won any, you know, they hadn't won back-to-back series since June. They were struggling throughout August. Some of the moves that they made during the trade deadline didn't quite pan out the way they were supposed to. Yankee fans are angry that Jordan Montgomery is doing so well on the Cardinals and Harrison Bader, who I just spoke about in segment two, is rehabbing with Somerset Patriots and not up with the Yankees, or not with the Yankees at all, because they traded for a guy with an injured foot. The other thing, IKF, not playing a great shortstop. He's hitting okay, but he's not playing a great shortstop. Josh Donaldson's not really hitting. His defense is fine, actually, for his age. I can't believe I said that because I'm 11 years older than him, but for his age, he's playing pretty good defense. But Yankee fans wanted the Yankees to make a big splash this offseason, and they didn't. They traded for Josh Donaldson and $50 million, which freed up money for the Twins to get Carlos Correa. So, of course, Yankee fans are going to be mad at Hal Steinbrenner for doing that. Do I agree with them booing him in Jeter ceremony? Not necessarily. I understand why they did. But I always feel uncomfortable when people like that are booed. And they booed Cashman and he wasn't even there. Jeter mentioned him in his speech. And people started booing. And Jeter joked and said, wow, you guys are ready for the playoffs. Or I see you guys are ready for the playoffs already. And I get Michael Kay defending Hal because he's a company guy. You know, he's on Yes, the Yankees. Sports and Entertainment Network, or Entertainment and Sports Network, that is, right, yes, Y-E-S, that's the order, Stace. So I understand why he's defending Hal, but there are reasons 
There are valid reasons why people were booing Hal Steinbrenner. Yankee fans are not satisfied with one World Series since 2000. They're not satisfied with the fact that the Yankees haven't been to the World Series since they last won the World Series in 09. They're not satisfied with the fact that they have an aging Josh Donaldson at third and Isaiah Kiner-Falefa at short when they could have had Carlos Correa. It's just the way it is. But everything led into that. Donaldson, IKF, not getting Correa, Jordan Montgomery being traded away for uh, an injured pitcher and doing as well as he's doing on the Cardinals, the Yankees falling off a cliff, nearly losing their division lead, playing lifeless. And yes, there are a lot of injured players. I just mentioned four of them <laughs> rehabbing in Somerset. And there are others who are just coming back. DJ still hurt. Rizzo is still not playing. And yes, recently injuries have caught up to the Yankees, but they started playing badly before the injuries, guys. This bad play started before the All-Star break, and then it just snowballed, and the snowball became like the boulder in Raiders of the Lost Ark chasing Indiana Jones. <laughs> That's an old reference. So I get it. I understand why Yankee fans are not happy and why they would boo Hal Steinbrenner. But Michael Kay needs to understand why Yankee fans are doing that. And Don LaGreca actually brought up valid points. He brought up everything I just spoke about because I tend to do this when I'm watching radio shows. I kind of yell back at the TV. And I like Michael Kay. He follows me on Twitter and he's very nice to me. He mentioned this show on his show a couple months ago. I nearly fainted. And I just didn't agree with what he was saying. And Don LaGreca, after I was yelling at the TV, but not really yelling, yelling, I was just like, but this happened and this happened. Don LaGreca brought up those points. He brought up the Donaldson thing. He brought up the fact that the twins freed up that money to get Correa. That's what it was. That's why Yankee fans were pissed. So while I don't agree with the booing, I understand the booing. And the only thing that'll stop the booing, the Yankees playing better, making the playoffs, making it past the first round, actually winning the AL East, making it past the first round. And that'll make Yankee fans happy. I mean, actually, you know what? To be real, Yankee fans are not going to be happy without a World Series. It's World Series or bust for most Yankee fans at this point, because as I said, 13 years since they appeared in one and won one, <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's just too much of a drought for these guys. Um, I'm used to long droughts because when I first started being cognizant of actual baseball, my first experience was listening to them lose to the Dodgers in the 81 World Series. And I cried myself to sleep. I was seven years old. And that was like a lasting memory. That was 41 years ago. <laughs> and I remember it. I cried myself to sleep listening to the Yankees lose on my Sony Dream Machine. My 1979 Sony Dream Machine. And a lot of the people who were complaining about the Yankees not winning so much never experienced a drought like this because they were kids in the 90s. They thought it was normal for the Yankees to keep making the playoffs and winning the World Series. Four out of five? I wasn't really around. I was around, but I wasn't, I didn't know what was going on in 77 and 78 baseball wise. I have memories from those years, but not related to baseball. My first real clear memory is listening to the 81 World Series. So these kids who were, say, seven in 1996, think about how their baseball fandom was shaped from watching their favorite team win four out of five World Series and constantly making the playoffs and missing the playoffs for the first time in 2008. And I've said this a couple weeks ago, I believe. The Yankees, or maybe last week, the Yankees have now had 30 winning seasons in a row. That's incredible. That's incredible. Of course, it would be much better if they could make the World Series and win the World Series at some point more in the 2000s than just 2009. But having 30 years 
of winning seasons is amazing. There are how many? No other teams that can really do that because a lot of teams, when they rebuild, they truly let themselves rebuild and lose a ton of games. The Yankees don't do that. And I joke about this all the time. As angry as Yankee fans are at Hal right now, I kind of sort of want to experience um, a bad season. Although you could say that the second half of this season feels like a bad season and we're just seeing how everyone's reacting to it. It's not good. So guys, imagine, and ladies, because I know ladies listen to the show and watch the show. Just imagine if the way the Yankees played in August was spread out for an entire 162 game season. Just imagine. Yankee fans would lose it. They wouldn't be able to handle it. (laughs) And I would just... It would make my show a lot different if the Yankees were that bad all year. I I actually wouldn't really know what to do because it's been a while since it's been like that. So just be thankful that things are the way they are. The Yankees are in good shape right now. The Rays and the Jays are beating up on each other in Toronto. All the Yankees have to do is take care of business against the Red Sox. That's all they need to do for the next two nights. Will they do it? We'll find out. Tomorrow's show will be a recap of tonight's game. Um, We'll talk about the matchup for tomorrow, like anything that's going on like that. And if we have the updates from the rehabbing players, we will have that for you and any other news that happens in Yankee land. But for now, that's it for this episode of Locked On Yankees, which is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Remember, you can listen to the show in Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Odyssey, Spotify, Stitcher, or anywhere else you get your podcasts. You can watch and subscribe to us on YouTube. Again, hit the thumbs up button, comment, and click on the bell notification so you know when our videos go up. And if you're looking for something to listen to after you listen to Locked On Yankees, make your second listen the Locked On MLB podcast. MLB expert Paul Francis Sullivan brings humor, passion, and a unique perspective on every team and the biggest stories from around the league. Follow the number one daily league-wide podcast, Locked On MLB, on the Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. One more thing, if you could be so kind, please rate the podcast and spread the word about this podcast to your fellow Yankee fans. We would really appreciate it. So enjoy your Tuesday, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Thank you.